Hey everyone, Chris again here from Burgos Brewing, and today we're drinking some beer. Stay tuned. So as promised, today we are tasting some beer. Now, this right here is the Belgian Pale Ale from the Brew Day video I did a couple weeks ago. So it's now been in the keg for a little over a month now. And you can see the leaves falling off the trees behind me. It's in the middle of October. This is a brew kind of beginning of September, so it's getting up there in age, but I think for Belgians, you know, the longer you let them sit, the better they seem to get. So. Uh, you can see here it's got a little, little, little bit of chill haze because of the condensation on the glass, but uh, you know, overall it's, it's clear enough, it's cleared up pretty nice. Kind of see my finger a little bit through it. Um, again, these tulip glasses aren't the best for clarity, but it's the closest thing for traditional Bel Belgian, Belgian glass that I have, so we're gonna roll with it. And this is kind of my go to glass for almost anything. I re really love this glass for you know. You know, aroma taste it seems to be the best all around glass for me. So, cheers. Oh, yeah, it's good. But before we really start reviewing, let's just uh, just clarify here. Um, I don't think I have the best palette. I don't know if I have a great palette, nor do I claim to. So, um, I can kind of give you the broad strokes of what it tastes like. But as far as a super, super good analysis. Maybe not best for me, but what I will be is honest with my own beer and tell you whether or not it's good. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry if it's hard to hear me. The wind's kind of blowing, but it's been a beautiful day. It's about 75 degrees out right now still, so I wanted to be outside, and I love the natural lighting for, for you know, for getting, you know, the hue of the beer and all that, the color. I really like the natural lighting better, so I, was, I wanted to do it outside. So, uh, but as you can see, it, it's poured, you know, it poured with a pretty good head. Um... The big foam doesn't stick around too long, but you can see kind of a nice thin layer of white foam that kind of sticks around the whole time. So as far as head retention, the big head doesn't stick around, but you still got that nice fine layer of bubbles that sticks around the top pretty long. So uh, yeah, it's going for aroma. So besides the, you know, what I got on my nose, um, it smells Belgian, so that's a good start. Um, really, what do we get in here? Let me, let me go in again. I think you get that traditional kind of straw hay-like right up front with that Belgian character from the East. Um, get to it maybe a, a tiny bit of like what my brain perceives as like the clove phenol. I, it's not not really heavy but I think that's more up front in, in the aroma than anything and then I get, think you also get a really nice um, you get that multi that I think that that care of Vienna is really coming through, kind of gives you this like crackery, more biscuit, almost graham crackery. Yeah, I think graham cracker biscuit is probably more, more in more what it is. I guess I think it's that care of Vienna really coming, just that pound, just really coming through in the aroma strong. So let's get let's get in the taste a little bit. Yeah, so up front, I think, again, it's just, I, what can I say, it's yeah, Belgian. It just screams Belgian at you. That's not overwhelming, but you can definitely tell that that's the type of yeast that it is. It's, it's definitely a Belgian yeast. Um, this being fermented, you know, in the you know, 70, 75-ish for, for most of the time, it's giving more, more on the fruity side. And I think it's... You know perceptively and kind of biased you know no You're trying to think of what the yeast is supposed to do it leans towards banana for me but I don't know if it's actually banana it's kind of more you know I mean more of that stone fruit side of, of the Belgian yeast is definitely definitely more in the fruity and then kind of the, the back end is where you get that just nice kind of I think there's a little bit of phenol to kind of dry it out and then just cleanse your palate and then you want to go right back in for the next sip. And I think it's kind of good because I think traditionally Belgian styles, you think kind of dry, finishes right there, and then boom, you want to go in for the next sip. And I think, you know, we can get 
you know, the mouthfeel after that, but I think it's kind of medium. I don't think it, it doesn't finish super, super dry, but you can kind of get that, that mouthfeel kind of coat your tongue really nicely. I think um, it's there. I don't think it's super traditional Belgian, but I definitely think you get definitely reminiscent of a Belgian ale, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I would say definitely, definitely a medium mouthfeel. Um, yeah. Oh, but it's, it's it's super easy to drink. It came in around five, three, five and a half percent, some somewhere in that ballpark. So it's a nice, easy sipper. And I will say, I don't think the the fruitiness isn't super overwhelming. The clove isn't. It's just kind of nice there in the background. I think it's more fruity up front clove just a little bit in the background there to kind of help balance it out a little bit so i think it's kind of basically just middle of the road belgian as far as the character goes and as far as hops um, yeah i don't i don't think there's all that much there in the aroma at least maybe maybe a hint of some earthy earthy floral i use crystal in this i'm not getting much but i think there is something kind of in the background, I think playing with that phenolic at the end for me on my palate, there might be a little bit of kind of American hop bite. I don't know if it's, that's the right term for it, but sorry, excuse me. Um, because these crystal, I think they're only like three and a half percent alpha, so I, you know, I use them at like fifteen in flame out or something like that, or ten in flame out. So not a whole lot an ounce at each edition, so it shouldn't lend a whole lot of eye view and bitterness, but. I think maybe that that kind of floral, you know, floral, lightly citrus American hop thing is kind of play not playing so nice in the background there. It gives you a little bit at the end, and I think between the, the little hint of that clovey phenol with kind of the drying of the Belgian yeast with with that, it's just it's not really mixing at the end there. I don't know if you heard that tree branch fall in my neighbor's shed. Sorry, that was that, was that glance. Um, yeah, overall, it's a, it's a great drinking beer. It's not it's not overwhelming to any side of the palate. It's not like too estery, too phenolic. I think it's kind of right in the middle. It's kind of your basically a run of the mill Belgian ale. If that's what you're looking for at five and a half percent. But yeah, so again, like I said, it's it's been in the keg probably five six weeks at this point. Um, See, it's kind of seeing my finger and the symbol of the glass through it a little bit. It was very hazy for probably the first two, three, maybe even four weeks in the keg. It was, it was you know, pretty, I didn't think it was going to clear out at all. And then, you know, I didn't pour it for about a week or two because I wanted to save some to get a review done. And I poured it again and not this glass and like, you know, our traditional pint glass. And it was, it was pretty clear to kind of see my fingers all the way through it. So, yeah, these glasses not great for clarity but they do i think they help with the aroma and the flavor but you see again there's still some condensation some chill haze in there but yeah i think once it warms up a little bit it definitely you know that belgian just jumps right out at you overall it's really good beer one of the one of the better ones i've made lately um yeah trying to see if I can go in and pick anything else out to, to give you but um so yeah so I'll run, run it back a little bit um this was the um Lollamond Abbey Ale Yeast so just dry yeast one packet threw it in I started at 68 and meant to just ramp up a degree per day until it finished and leave it at like 75 um dum dum here forgot to change the ice packs after like 48 hours so it got up to 75 a lot quicker than I wanted to Again, with Belgian yeast, I wasn't too worried about it, so I'm not getting any of the fusels that I thought I would. Um, and overall, and I think it just lends, you know, a little bit towards the fruity side than, than the clove and the, you know, phenolic side than anything with, with that temperature. I think, again, I think it was uh, five pounds of Viking Extra Pale, uh, five pounds of Brice uh, Pale Ale Malt, and then one pound of Caribbean. So simple, and then Magnum to Bitter. 
up and then an ounce of crystal at 10 or 15 and then another ounce at flame out um, simple recipe again it was all ingredients i've worked with before and, and you know pretty pretty commonly throughout the last year or so besides the the abbey yeast really in the caribbean so that those were kind of the two belgian characters i was trying to see in in the beer um i think they're coming through i really think that yeah that caribbean is that biscuity is that almost like a graham cracker biscuit like that great you know really just plain graham cracker i think that really comes through in the aroma Kind of is like the backbone of the beer you can kind of taste it throughout but i think really the belgian yeast is really it gives you the flavor i think it's got that nice enough fruitiness and again at the end it gives you that that kick of the that phenolic in mean, what i perceive as clove um, right there in the background and then it just kind of finishes finishes off and yeah, and I keep, I keep wanting to say medium but you know, as the beer warms up it feels like it gets more dry but that just could be a character of a beer warming up you know An overall great beer i just kind of wanted to see what that ad yeast was going to do because i've always been afraid to brew belgians there's a b always been afraid to brew belgians because i don't know what the yeast is going to do some you know really they're hit or miss for me sometimes it can go too phenolic too estuary and uh i know a lot of times if i get like the darker belgians like the a double a double or a dubel however however you want to say it um that raisin plum character is just, I want eight ounces of that and I'm good. I don't want a five gallon keg. I don't, it's just, it's just overwhelming to me. And then sometimes you get even some wits with that, that clovey phenol. It's just like, again, I want, you know, maybe one pour and I'm, and like, I'm good. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't need more than that. So uh, I kind of want something middle of the road. And this, this right here is, is hitting it for me. Um, I think again, if I was to brew it again, I'd keep almost, everything the same i would keep the recipe basically the same except my base mold i would probably go just a straight like maybe the like a belgian pale or a belgian pilsner or just a straight just normal two row or a pilsner or something something more plain that because i think that sorry that breeze is just giving it a little extra character than you really want um the pale ale mold is giving it a little extra and the hops i might i might back off on the hops a little bit go you know maybe a half ounce at 10 half ounce at flame out or just do one ounce at 10 instead of going to flame out because i think it's not really you know finishing the best but i'm kind of nitpicking at this point I'm trying to just, just try to find things that i would improve on um other than that or maybe go with the you know more traditional hop that would go in a belgian ale like a maybe a saz or a schizzle spall or something like that a little more a little more mild than that but i think this abyss is great um i'm sure if you tested the temperature range just a little bit you could probably get it to throw more estuary more phenolics depending on, on what you want and I, I think you know if you were to do a a, a, a do bell or a double with with this you could with the darker malts you get to push more of that those are raisin plum flavors but just in a simple you know belgian blonde or a belgian pale i think this is this is really doing what i wanted i don't you know it's hitting for me it, it, you know it was you know kind of what i was looking for just middle of the road belgian it didn't want it to throw too many ester too many phenols i just kind of wanted i was hoping it was going to be just a nice drinkable beer and what, what it's ended up being and you know right here with it being 75 you know end of summer going into falls you know when i brewed it what i had in mind it's really really hitting the spot so um yeah i think that's gonna be it for this one so uh stay tuned for more all right, so just a little bit of technical difficulties yesterday as, as I was trying to wrap up that review video, you know, dad duties called, so I kind of had to cut it off and, and and leave, but you know, it was probably better. I was just rambling and repeating myself at that point anyway, so uh, just wanted to, you know, quick wrap up. All in all, I think, you know, that Belgian Pale is good beer. A couple things I would change, sure, but I, it's, drink, it's drinking great, 
keg's almost gone at this point. It, you know, it's gonna go. Something I'd brew again and change up a few things, but yeah, I think it's something to give a go. Give that, you know, Lollamund Abbey East a go if you're looking for something kind of more neutral, just, you know, right in on the lighter side of the Belgian East character. So that's good, but again, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, if you want to see more of my home brewing journey, Burgles Brewing on Instagram. Uh, don't forget to check out the Brewtubers at Brewtubers.com. That's the online homebrew club that I'm a part of. And thank you to all the sponsors of Brewtubers. Without you, we couldn't do what we do. So the Beer and Wine Hobby Shop, uh, Brewing America, Imperial Yeast, Five Star Chemicals, and Yakima Valley Hops. Thank you so much. Guys, it's been fun. Let's do it again. I'll see you on the next video.